The Palms from Mark 11, 1 to 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and they found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told him, what Jesus, well, they told him they told them what Jesus had said and and they allowed them to take it then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting hosanna blessed is the one who comes in the name of the lord blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor david hosanna in the highest heaven then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Tenebrae service uh, this evening. Um, so I just wanted to start uh, following that reading by just telling you a little bit about how the service will work. It follows quite a structured pattern. Um, and most of the service actually will be read directly from scripture. Uh, Tenebrae. Uh, means shadows um, and if we were at church this evening after communion we would have turned out most of the lights except uh, one candle for each of the readers um, and after each of the readings the candles would have been would have been extinguished or put out um, and we would have finished in silence and darkness so what we're going to try if if we can this evening is after after communion if you aren't reading, I'll invite you then to turn out your light if it's safe to do so. Um, obviously, don't leave yourself in a position where you're going to get where you could fall or anything in the dark. You know, only if it's safe to do so, turn out your light or turn out a side light. Or if you wish, you could turn off your video. That would be another option. When we finish, um, and we'll finish in plenty of time for the key worker uh, clapping at, at eight o'clock. Um, so there'll be a few minutes if you if you want to sit here in in silence and then we can just leave whenever whenever you're ready just leave um, and then after the key worker clapping at eight o'clock there'll be a prayer vigil uh, that Ron is running through Facebook and through the WhatsApp prayer group so please uh, please join in that if you are able so <clears throat> I'm going to um, open in a moment with prayer um, and then I will uh, read um, another reading uh, which will follow by uh, communion um, and then after communion uh, what will happen then is we will have what what are called the the shadows readings so um, and e each of the readers um, hopefully knows what they're reading um so uh, we'll just follow through there um and if necessary i'll 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 prompt people but i, I don't think it will be um <clears throat> normally we read normally we use the the new version of the lord's prayer um uh, we, which actually I, I prefer, but uh, I think for, for this evening, if you don't mind, I'm going to read the more traditional version um, just for a change. So let's pray. Eternal God of mercy, we gather in awesome wonder to behold your loving gift of grief at Jesus Christ, who coming to bring the world to wholeness was broken by it. Yet by his death we live and know your unbreakable love. As we gather to remember his gift of friendship at your table and to recall our failings, forgive us 
reassure us of your abiding presence and transform us by the Spirit of Christ who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The, pro the prophecy. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of, of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. And some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than, a hun more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, let her be alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the, feast of, on the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you to a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say after one another, surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the son of man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would, not, it would have been better for that one not to have been born. The upper room. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to them saying, take this, my body. And then he took a cup, giving thanks. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them and all of them drank from it. And he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. This night, we return to an upper room where Jesus gathered with his disciples to celebrate the Passover and to share a meal of remembrance. Let's join with those, who's first, who, with those first disciples and the church of all times and places to know Christ anew in the breaking of bread. As we come together to eat and drink at the Lord's table, we pray. Father, we are separated in our own homes, but you're with us all. We are separated in our own homes, but we are family. We are separated in our own homes, but we stand together supporting each other. Father, may the food at our table be for us on this night, your body. 
may the drink at our table be, be for us on this night your blood father while we may be afraid we trust in you while we may be sad we rejoice in you father on sunday we called out hosanna meaning save us please on sunday we called out hosanna meaning thank you we are saved father we sit at your table not because we have earned the right but by your grace and by the debt paid by your son jesus christ for this we are thankful amen we will now share the bread or food that we've got and in a moment we'll eat together so if you want to share or prepare your food this is the body of our lord jesus christ broken for you In the same way, let's share the wine or the drink. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you. And let's say together, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Vanda will now bring us the first of our readings. Uh, but if you are able to turn out your light or turn out your video, if you would like to do that now, if you're not one of the readers. The Shadow of Daniel, Mark 14, 26 to 31. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. The Shadow of Sorrow Mark chapter 14 verses 32 to 42 they went to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, 
saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The shadow of betrayal. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given him a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away on the guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The Shadow of Desertion, Mark 14, verses 46 to 52. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. The Shadow of Trial Mark 14, 53 to 15, 15. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I'll destroy the te this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I'll build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You've heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, 
I don't know or understand what you're talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you're a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I don't know this man you're talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock, cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a constitution, consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man nailed called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The Shadow of Crucifixion, Mark 15, verses 16 to 32. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed the cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him.
the shadow of death. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lemma Sabakathi, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar and put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learnt from the centurion that he was, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. <laughs> 